everyone. Welcome back now. This is the eighth and final video um, in this present series. We've talked about before the various techniques of playing a brass instrument. This includes the listing here we have, the types of articulation, smooth, accented, etc. The air control from your diaphragm or belly breathing. We've spoken about the importance of scales and how by using scales you can picture in your music the scales and therefore if you learn the scales you'll be able to play the music faster as in you'll pick up the music faster. Okay, It jumps out at you. So that makes all the difference when you're playing new works. It gets gets you into the music faster. Sequences, rhythmical sequences, rhythmical shapes, etc. We start to recognize various shapes through the piece. That again will help you process the music faster. Slurring. Okay. Very important for making music smooth. If you're slurring from a, a note to a higher note, okay, you need to make sure you're supporting the pitch, in fact, speeding the air up so that the pitch will lift rather than drop. So push more air and speed it up. That will then increase the pitch of, of, the, of the note. Vibrato. Right, vibrato is more for keeping long notes interesting, okay? But you've got to be in control of the vibrato as in the speed of it. Start off a note slow, start to speed the vibrato up to a point where it feels it's warming the sound. That is a real um, technique that needs to be mastered and it takes a while to do this. Uh, so please, you know, very important if you want to be a soloist. Then we get on to the uh, more advanced techniques, which is double and triple tonguing. Double tonguing is very important for your general playing. Um, you can turn on and turn off double tonguing throughout your um, pieces of music that you're on, and it, it certainly helps to, to um, play the faster music. Triple tonguing is generally um, for the soloists, those who want to play triplet, polkas, etc., um, or in an orchestral work, you do use them sometimes in the faster um, techniques such as the fanfares and, and things like that. So, um, it's really, really important that you get all those te techniques off before you think about the next level of playing. We call it the X Factor you know the television series the X Factor is what your audience would get out of your performance if you put the X Factor in the audience will be entertained more and get more out of it so the things that we use is what's been discussed before phrasing, vibrato, volume control crescendo, diminuendo speed control, rallentando, slowing down accel, speeding up and last but not least tenuto which is a way of holding back notes to give them poise to give the music space which we'll get round to um, in the next um, half an hour when I put a piece up here and we'll play the actual piece so for this particular um, video I've, ch I've chosen two pieces this is the first one and it's called the lost chord and it's about a um, an organist who sits down one day starts to play and he just by accident comes across this chord okay that he that he plays and it lifts him emotionally to certainly to such an extent it lifts him to write this piece of music and um, this is what you need to do to your audience you need to lift their mood okay you can play in lots of different moods aggressive solemn smooth Ag agitated okay all these moods you can put into your playing
by the different types of articulation and volume control. So you see by this piece, okay, we have two small two-bar phrases. We've got two sentences there. Seated one day at the organ, comma. That is a phrase. I was weary and ill at ease. That is the second phrase. Okay, that goes along with everything you say. There's always pause points when you're talking. These are now the points where you would breathe playing your instrument. The last phrase, if you'll notice, it says, and my fingers wandered idly over the noisy keys. So there's no real need to breathe in there because there's, n there's not really a, a, a space required. Maybe a little bit of pause okay, on certain notes to just dwell and, and just give the music flow and um, both in speed forward and speed back, as, as I've spoken before. Um, so we need to work on, on this technique. So I have a couple of little um, indications here, little symbols that I put on my music to you now to make you um, understand which part of the bars we speed up and slow down. Um, so if you'll notice above the bars, I put a, a little arrow going to the left, which means pull the speed back. Okay, And on the right hand bar, I put an arrow going to the right, which means push the melody forward. Also underneath, we've got crescendos, which get louder, and diminuendos in the next bar getting quieter. So these can be put any part in the piece to, to actually push on or pull back. So those are four of the little symbols that I use in the piece. Going back to our lost chord, you'll notice now in the very first bar, we start to increase the volume and then we pull back the speed in the second bar to dwell on, which is the main topic of the whole song, isn't it? It's about an organ. OK, so those are very important words anyway. So we bring those two words out. Carries on then. I was weary and ill at ease okay and you'll notice those little lines underneath some of the notes which are tenuto notes where we dwell a little bit now you'll also notice as we go through at the end of bar three the end of bar four at the end of bar six and end of bar seven we have these arrows pointing to the left and in my opinion the fourth beat of any bar is the one that you can make the most music with the most you can bring the most emotion to a piece of music because what you are in fact doing is you're holding the tension before you go over the bar line to resolve on to the next note and I'll show you um, as I play this in a minute or so um, so have a look at these but look at bar five and six we've got a standard bar there which says get louder slightly into the middle of the phrase which is on bar 6 and then go back quieter again and in bar 7 again we get slightly louder and pull back quieter so these are standard techniques for shaping phrases so let me play this for you now so using all these techniques here we're going to shape this solo get where I'm coming from here and you can use these techniques on any any tune whatsoever let's move on to the next one okay so remember pulling back pushing forward poise by tenuto let's have another look at, at, at the piece um, this is an American piece I'm sure most people know this it's oh Shenandoah and um, again we can use the techniques we've learned before the different articulations and the, 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 you can actually slur some of the, of, of the notes if you wish to make it smoother okay so here we go we've put the lines on this time 
So whenever you get a piece of music that picks up over the bar line, so you have the first note is belonging to a previous bar, then it's always good to hold that note back. That's why I've put the little arrow above it, because then you're introducing the main theme with that one note. Then, as normal, on the fourth beat, or the last beat of the bar, because some of these bars are in three beats in a bar, so on the last beat of the bar, we hold back. Okay, and generally move the, the air forward through the instrument, crescendo, uh, pull it back, diminuendo, to create warmth. So, let's have a look at O Shenandoah. Uh... little piece of music that um, so I'm, I hope I'm coming across to you um, as to what I suggest you to do with these things okay shape is as much importance as the actual notes themselves so without further ado please 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 if you haven't subscribed to my channel please have a go um, I, I will be doing another series of uh, performance videos so if you have any suggestions that you want me to play anything particular um, just get in contact through the website and um, subscribe and join the fun um, so without without young players starting off and becoming virtuoso players we never get orchestras it, they don't just happen so the whole point of these videos is to bring on the youth into the brass playing network so thank you for listening and i'll see you next time